Next, we got Bad Bunny, San Juan Street Fight. Bad Bunny defeated Damian Priest in 25 minutes and four seconds. It was a run-in by Judgment Day. The LWO, Carlito, and Savio Vega. Um, I Listen, this is not a Masawa five-star match, okay? <laughs> We're not getting, this is not, the, you know, but it was really entertaining. I thought Bad Bunny did a great job. Uh, you know, for the time dedicated to what he what he does in his professional career to to take his time out and to do this and to have a match like he did with Damian Priest. Uh, big, big, actually, big credit to Damian Priest, right? Huge credit for him. Absolutely. And you know what? This guy, I, just, I want people to think about Damian Priest's trajectory in his career, okay? He came into WWE later in age. He's not a young man. Punishment Damian Martinez, Priest. baby. Punishment Martinez. Damian Priest is 40 years old. He's been there for what? Yeah. Two years? I think he was like 38 when he went over. Yeah, he was on NXT guy. for a little while before he He's, went to the main roster. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he wrestled all around the New York scene. He's a Monster Factory guy. He was in Ring of Honor for years. Uh, and I can remember him doing those weird Ring of Honor paid ads for like knee braces <laughs> and, and wheelchairs or whatever it was. And dude, you know, six foot five, two fifty. This guy looks like a million bucks. Has great presentation. I I love a story like that. You know that now, even if this guy never wins a world championship in that company, right, or any title beyond this point, he achieved something so humongous, and it has to mean so much for him. He he headlined essentially, right? It was a double main event. This was the main event, in my opinion, and it should have been. He headlined against the greatest, I mean, the biggest musician in the world currently in his home country in front of 18,000 people. You know, it's it's a great feel-good story for him. I hope Absolutely. he had a great night. I hope he went out. I hope he went nuts. <laughs> you, know? you know? You know, after I saw this match, you know what my first thought was? I wish he could win this stupid Raw world title. Because this match doesn't go off like it did without him. Uh, you know, Bad Bunny was excellent with his athleticism, with his willingness to do some risky stuff, you know, jumping off the top of stuff and landing on stuff. But you, you, he had to have faith that Priest was going to take care of him and, and yeah, protect yeah. him in this and match. And Priest did. And at the same time, Priest knew that Bad Bunny is not someone who's trained so he knew he was going to take a beating at the same time because bad bunny would not be able to take care of him in the same way yeah uh but i i have i'm so high on on damian priest bilingual giant can wrestle the cool one of the coolest looks in, cool look. in wwe yeah. right now yeah now there's going to be some folks and you know there's a there's a pretentious wrestling fan inside all of us. You know, the second we go, hmm, what was the star rating in our brain? Like we're being pretentious. Some, in some instances, that's some people's job. And I watched this match and I was like, my first instinct, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll be completely honest here. I was like, hmm, maybe Bad Bunny shouldn't be doing so many moves because he's making wrestling look easy. And that was my first instinct. And that's my old school mentality, yeah. right? It's why Rowdy Roddy Piper doesn't want to take a pinfall to Mr. T at WrestleMania 1, right? We Do you feel like that about Logan like, Paul? Very much so. Okay. But at the same time, you pull out and go, okay, that's not necessarily what wrestling is anymore. Uh, it is to some people, right? To some people who are holding that close. And it, it can be in some instances. But I, wa I then sat back and go, I'm not going to even think about a rating. I'm not going to like critique it like i would critique something else and i pulled back and i said this is such a fantastic crossover match that probably made more fans of pro wrestling now how much do they stick with that who knows but they probably had more casual eyeballs wanting to see bad bunny than than anything else that they've done and this is from somebody who loves aew like people are gonna say Oh, this Bad Bunny match. Yeah, it was entertaining, but it's no MJF and Brian Danielson at Revolution. And it doesn't need to be. It's not. And it never it's will not, be. That's it not doesn't what it was meant to be. To be. But, but you listen. can have both, and that's why pro wrestling is great. You can have both and cater to different kinds of fans. You hit the nail on the head here, right? Because, uh, listen, people know my background, right? I'm in PR. I'm in marketing. I'm in sales. I have been conditioned 
to know what's good, know what I like, but also take myself out of the equation and say, listen, it's not always about me. It's about growth and seeing what, what other people are interested in. I, I'm going to, and I brought this up a couple times on the show, and that, that garden show that I went to, oh, I brought it up earlier today, it was almost like an awakening for me because mm -hmm. I got to see how other people are watching wrestling. And having people like Bad Bunny and Logan Paul and Ronda Rousey and whatever else celebrity thing that they've been doing recently, they've all worked. I mean, Ronda was a success for them. Forget about bad writing and whatever happened with her right now. Ronda was a major success. Uh, I'm, you know, we're seeing Conor McGregor now kind of tweeting stuff out there. These are all things that's drawing a new audience. And you know what that audience is? Much younger than I am. My daughter yep. and all of her friends were talking about this. Uh, my son's birthday party was yesterday. Guess what all the boys were talking about? Bad Bunny wrestling. These are six, <laughs> seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds, right? They were talking about wrestling. I have a lot of kids in my family. Uh, over the last, you know, I, I, I have cousins. I have nephews. You know, just uh, the ages vary from five years old to their 20s. I have never seen the group of kids talk about wrestling the way that they've been talking in the last 15 years. So there is a shift happening with younger viewers. I don't have the metrics. I'm just gauging it based on what I'm observing between my kids in school. I have a very different perspective on this because I'm actually seeing what these kids are doing. This is, a, mm -hmm. I, I'm not comparing it to the 90s, right? Don't, don't take it as if I'm comparing it to when, when I was a kid going to Toys R Us and buying the figures, but I'm, I'm seeing these kids in wrestling shirts and compared to prior to the pandemic, I didn't see that. I didn't see a lot yeah. of John Cena shirts as much as I, I used to, you know, in 99, 2000, whatever. There is a shift happening, and I do think it has to do with some of these decisions they're making. Wrestling is cool if Bad Bunny's wrestling. Yep. People, more people Absolutely. care. Absolutely. And, and at the end of the day, that's growth. That's what you got to do. And this, this is exactly what Vince did in 84, 85. Celebrity influence, rock and wrestling. 